So, I'm currently reading the Brian Michael Bendis Uncanny X-Men and All New X-Men, among other things. Spoiler alert. Big spoiler alert. I've never been a huge comic book collector, partly because it gets really expensive, but I dabble from time to time, and I love the X-Men. They are my favourite comic heroes by far, for all their faults. But I'm a bigger film nerd than I am comic nerd, and as I read I'm reminded of the huge differences between the two mediums. Western superhero comics are crazy, with a capital C, and then a capital A, and then a capital Y, like how we typed on MSN in 2005. And for many, many reasons they are not as crazy when they are translated to screen. Most of the biggest reasons are due to the form. A comic is drawn, limited somewhat, to its soundless, two-dimensional form, and enjoyed at the reader's own pace. For better or worse, you can get away with a lot of things that you couldn't get away with in a film, which has its own established language. A character's movement or change of mood from one panel to the next might be really jarring if faithfully transcribed to video. And there are deeper differences too. We the audience expect, or at least are expected to expect, a certain level of truth to what we see in live action. For instance, that physics makes sense, the way that things move and interact with each other making sense. We want the greater universe that we're watching on the screen to have some kind of logic to it, and in a 90 minute film, as opposed to decades and decades of comic writing, you may have to simplify. This is the reason that there are no aliens in the X-Men film, and yet in the comics Xavier marries the freaking Queen of Space, and why Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart send Wolverine back in time to foil a dastardly plan in the movies, but in the comics, Beast, in an act of desperation as he undergoes another shift in his mutation, goes back in time and brings the five original X-Men to the present day so they can help the present day Cyclops who's gone off the rails and become some kind of freedom fighter revolutionary to see the error of his ways. But then Zorn and Deadpool and a bunch of aging mutants come back from the future and tell them that the past guys have to go home. And then Jean Grey and past Cyclops go to the future and they bring back yet another team of mutants. And Colossus reunites with his sister and Wolverine meets his son and there are like four Bobby Drakes. This stuff, as you can see, is tried and tested, addictive storytelling. It's designed to hook you in and make you excited. But here's the thing, it's not about the time travel, or the Sentinels, or the explosions. It's about those human moments. Shogo meeting his mother, the beast declaring his love to Jean Grey. It is the near infinite potential for relationships to change and dynamics to shift. Endless addictive storytelling is based on allegiances and relationships. Whether interpersonal, interplanetary, inter-series. Joss Whedon knows this, he wrote comics for ages and that's why in Buffy the Vampire Slayer Angel turns bad and Willow comes out and Spike stays in it for ages and is like evil then good then evil then gets a chip in his head and stuff. And look at the flip side, Heroes, I think we can all agree, is really bad after season one. There are a lot of reasons for that but one of them is that they weren't flexible when it came to their characters. They stayed good, or they stayed evil, or they didn't progress, or they died before they had a chance to form real relationships with other characters. Most of us don't watch Buffy for the action. We don't watch House for the medical mystery. We watch them because characters might kiss, or die, or team up against each other in ever more interesting combinations. And that, my friends, is what is known as a soap opera. The intertwined emotional lives of different characters, their changing relationships, romantic affairs, and rivalries. You are all reading and watching soap operas and loving it. And those movie adaptations, the ones you like the most, are the ones that are more like soap operas. And you know what else is a soap opera? Wrestling. WWE is one of the greatest soap operas of our time. And I, for one, think that is awesome.